Redline Logbook here for Wistoria Chapter 38. And we start off where we left off with Zero taking Will. Now, as you can imagine, Will tries to deny this, and the first thing Zero does is just blast him with lightning. I assumed he was going to try to convince Will to join him, but no. His entire argument why he should take Will is because it, no matter what it is, riches, women, drink, or men, no matter what he likes, if he does, he takes it. It's that plain, that simple. And as you can imagine, all the women who are in attendance and hearing this, basically think he's a savage and so basically it becomes an a competition between both Elfie and Zero to see who gets Will. Clannette actually tries to throw the Earth faction hat into the ring, but that is immediately shown to be pointless because these two decide they're going to fight. Kiri then says she's not going to let two Magic Wanda fight over a boy, but that's when the other two Magic Wanda who are currently in the room are like, let them do what they want, who cares? Not our concern. In fact, if they kill each other, that'd be great. So now that Kirby is basically shut down and she can't do anything about this, so now two Magic Wanda are going to fight, and it is a pretty epic fight. Will has moved out of the way, so he's safe. Julius is actually trying to wake Will up because he's the only one who can stop this, but even then, I don't think Will could stop this. And the first thing Elfie does is summon her cathedral. You know that giant spell that's able to just attack you randomly with ice spikes out of the ground and impale you? But Zero is so fast he was able to dodge it. Gets behind her, punches her, and it shatters and dies. One of her clones. Not just that, but there are dozens of clones just floating all up in the sky, surrounding him. Julius didn't even see her make the clone, so he's wondering when did she do this. Sarissa then explains that she did the split second after casting her cathedral. In fact, she wasn't even attacking with the cathedral. What she was doing was using it as cover, so this way he wouldn't notice that she summoned all these clones. And her and all of her clones are looking down at him, and she straight up just says, Will is mine, and then cast the name of the spell. And this is a high-grade, long-cast spell, but she doesn't have to do the entire cast. She has to say the name, and she's able to do it, which is such an advanced ability that Julius is dumbfounded because he also did a long cast spell, but he had to actually read the whole thing out. So he thinks it's absurd that she's this powerful. Not just that, but each of her clones can do it. And this spell just annihilates the ground below her. The other spectators basically say that Elfie is the greatest mage when it comes to long-range combat, and there's no one who can beat her. The only problem is that this isn't a long-range fight. This is a close-range fight, and Zero is the, her opponent. The first thing he does is he destroys all of her clones, and then he goes for the one standing in the center and hits it head-on, expecting this to be the real Elfie, but no, it's not. See, what Elfie did is she actually made sure every single clone was within his sight, so this way he would focus on them. And then she made herself fly up into the sky, cast Elf so her magic couldn't be sensed. This way, she was in the perfect position to launch a massive attack directly on him. And just as Julius blew up his clones before, Elfie does the exact same thing with all of hers. Completely detonates every single one of her ice clones. And this explosion is massive. The entire arena is just covered in ice at this point. There's almost nothing left of the actual arena. Funny enough, Zero actually survives this unscathed. And Elfie's actually surprised. She actually assumed this was going to do a lot of damage. Which means this was just overwhelming her at this point. He tossed his spear at her. And then he immediately teleports to it, which is insane. And from here, he basically just uses her as a ball. Where he hits her, teleports to where she's about to land, hits her again. And he just keeps doing that at this point. Clement thinks that he might be a knight, just like Liana. But Liana's like, no, that's not it. He's just releasing magic power in bursts. Guilford's actually impressed that Liana was able to figure out so quickly what Zero was doing. And he basically explains to her that this is their faction's point. This is how they fight, and this is what they attain for. It's pure, unadulterated might for the sake of might. That's all there is to it. And how Zero became the Magic Wanderer of the Thunder Wand. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, give a thumbs up so you can enjoy more with story and other main things. Thank you and have a great day.